What's up, everybody? It's your boy, Head Coach Ross of the Attacks Team, Street Warrior, Njia Uhuru Kibura. For those of you who do not know, Njia Uhuru is a Swahili term. It means the way of freedom. Kibura is the Kimbundu term, the Kikongo term, the correct term that has been mispronounced as Kapuera. Okay, let's get straight into this. This won't take too long. I'm responding because today, just today, I got 26 emails on this topic, and all together, probably, there's definitely an excess of 120 uh, emails, and that's about this. I speak consistently about the fact that the great majority, well over 90% of the fighting knowledge, self-defense knowledge, healing knowledge, uh, cultural knowledge, etc., so on and so forth, of the fighting arts of uh, Kipura, which is also mispronounced as Kapuyana, uh, actually exists in the spiritual teachings of our of our African ancestors, in particular, uh, with the Orisha, the Ngizi. Turning around here to try to get the light right because the light's trying to leave us as we're speaking, you know, etc., et so on and so forth. And we trace it all the way back to Maat and before. Now, this is also important because one of the critical elements that was used in our defense. The bandana was the bandana, yeah. I mean, literally, the bandana. It started off with uh, African women who were using these incredibly beautiful, elaborate, and stylistic scarves and uh, shawls uh, as as uh, not only beautiful ornamental fashion statements, but they were also highly capable, highly highly effective self-defense uh, weapons. That one can carry about and it doesn't look like a weapon. So you have a nasty shock when you run up on this sister and you think you've got her unarmed. And she'll break the thing out and beat you down, literally to death, oftentimes. So, uh, and there are various Orisha who are actually uh, well known for this. And, um, especially uh, Nana Bruka, who is a particular incarnation of, of Yemaya, and of course Yemaya herself. And you see an, an Osun daughter of Yemenya, and so on and so forth. You see a lot of these skills displayed in the traditional dances that give praise to our African uh, gods and goddesses, our our Orisha and Kizi, or what have you, whatever particular uh, spiritual system it is. You find the, this information within it, and a lot of this information has survived here in the here in the the West and the Americas, but of course, since the uh, Europeans both wanted to exterminate the practice and knowledge of the art and the practitioners of the art, and they really did not understand what was going on, they of course managed to screw everything up in the transmission of the information, just like they somehow either translated Kipura into Capoeira and misunderstood Angola, which is the name for the office of a ruler, as Angola, which they call the name of a country. Much different. Okay. And this isn't a diss to anyone, this is just a, you know, a, 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 a communication of the facts. Now, many of these skills that we have, and that we possess, you can see in Silat, and you can also see in uh, El Juego de Garaute in Venezuela, you know, which, which, which is a game using a rope, a wire, a garret which you kill someone with and uh, defend yourself against, uh, against assaults with and tie somebody and wrap someone up with. It also has knives, sticks, headbutts, and, and basically are many, many, many techniques that you would recognize as being part of Kipura are also part of uh, the Niwego de Garote in so-called Venezuela. Why is that? Because it's actually Kipura. That's why. All right, it's just a part of Kipura. If you went about and basically combined all the fighting systems that you saw being displayed by Africans from the motherland and also in here, you get Kipura. All right? So, there you go. <laughs> um, this kind of information and more, this is very important, this kind of information and more will be uh, collected and uh, presented in my ebook series, uh, which is called The Combat Secrets of the Orisha, all right? Uh, the first in the first in that series will be dealing with Adayu, and uh, and you will see 
just like you would with you see of it, with any of the other dances of, of the Orishas, any of the practice of the Orishas. Let's use Oshun as an example. You will see that if you use Oshun, look at any of her dances, you see the way in which the, the, the sisters are beautifully moving their arms and legs, etc. so so forth, and feet, feet. You see those exact same motions can be utilized, exact same motions can be utilized with knives in your hands, sticks in your hands, machetes in your hands, pistols in your hands, the, 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 the rope in your hands, the shawls, and the scarves, which is what they were using it for uh, when we were compelled to not use our, our more blatant uh, combat weapons when we were brought to slavery here. Or when we were fighting slavery here and hiding amongst those of our brethren so that uh, they couldn't tell who was who. Uh, these, these same techniques were often used to kill slave masters or slavers or just, in, in, you know, opportunistic rapers who would assault uh, these young women and uh, these girls and even elder women you know who, and who would also seek to rape uh, these same African uh, females so <clears throat> these skills and this knowledge and the the, the uh, colors and the styles uh, went went through a number of, of, uh, of transmutations because uh, white women, especially the women who were the uh, wives of the slave owners, saw African women and mixed women as competition and hated them every bit as much as the slave owners hated African men. Okay? So, uh, and looked upon African women as every bit as much as inhuman as the Af as the European men uh, saw uh, African men. So, as a result, uh, uh, the white women uh, were able to pass laws and exert uh, um, pressure to get uh, the practice of wearing of Af the African female practice of wearing these beautiful, incredible head wraps and shawls, which still survive as you know the, the hajib and what have you in in Islam and in many, many, many other people, uh, many, many other cultures, uh, even in Europe, <coughs> being worn in that particular style. Uh, the 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 wives or the women, the white women of colonial Europe were making certain that uh, African women could not wear their traditional clothing. You know, starting with the head wraps and the scarves, etc. and so on and so forth. These beautiful, elaborate, intricate designs and styles. You know, uh, these black women can really, really get with the styles. Really. Women in general can. They can dress way better than us men we suck. But uh, African women are especially, especially good at it. So... Uh, with the pressure that came from, hey, you know what, we cannot use our scarves and we cannot use our, our, our shawls anymore, uh, African women adjust, adjusted. First it was, hey, you cannot wear, wear your elaborate head, headdresses and head, head wrappings. Then it went to, you cannot wear, wear your uh, shawls. Then it went to, you cannot wear your scarves. Eventually, all these things we were doing, we were adjusting to the pressure and we wound up using the bandanas. And the bandanas wound up having less pressure, less hatred placed upon it initially because many sisters would use the bandanas around uh, white people to clean things and to hold and wrap things as, and it wasn't seen it wasn't seen right away as uh, a continuance of either the combative skills that African women were so famous for or uh, a, a sartorial choice, you know, the style of the clothing the beautiful style of the clothing that was utilized that would attract attention from uh, colonial slave master men and basically from white men in general, no matter what your uh, your economic class or your political class was. That's how the bandanas were passed on to us to this very day. That's how it got here, through the genius and the combat skills of African women. The same, like I told you, the same shawls, the same head wraps, the same scarves were then adopted by non-African women as expressions of style and beauty and were used in the ways that African women were, let, were, were frequently prevented from using. So all over the world, whenever you see people wearing this, 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 the uh, scarves and the shawls, including the haji, you know, whatever it's called, I keep forgetting. <laughs> Some people call it differently here. Some call it, you know, uh, haji or what have you, but you know, haji. Um, 
right now I'm tired and for some reason I cannot recall the correct name 99.9% .9 of the time and in every other day I would recall it right off top probably in a couple of minutes after I, I cut off this video I'll remember I think it's Haji uh, meaning the, the head wrap that's used in Islam that also comes from the African practices and from African women who are not Muslims at first so the main point is uh, the bandana that now gets a bad rap for the exact same reason that everything else that we did uh, uh, got a bad rap not because of something bad with it but because we were the ones using it uh, this same bandana has been used you know uh, amongst us and most recently like I said here in the United States as a uh, as uh, uh, and defamed as 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 uh, gang identification and really, the great majority of us continue to wear it exactly the way our African mothers created it to be, which is for stylistic purposes only, primarily. But once we come into the full knowledge of our fighting systems and our fighting skills and our spiritual systems, we will recognize that it's also used to help identify us as in which ethnic group from Africa we are from, and, and they are outstanding uh, methods of self-defense. They're not. Uh, they're, they're not... They're not uh, 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 gang affiliation identifiers uh, only or primarily. If they were, then white folks, when they won, would also be showing that they that they that they have uh, 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 they are affiliated with African gangs. But nobody thinks that when white people are wearing it, isn't that true? That's not being racist. It's just getting giving you an indication of how uh, we are all being manipulated by forces which are hostile to us. See what I'm saying? So it's very important that you're aware of this. When I say hostile to us, I'm saying hostile to all of us, just most hostile to black people, the we of African phenotype and African blood, first, foremost, and most. So, keep that in your hat. Look out for my ebook series, The Combat Secrets of the Orisha. There's so much information in there. I mean, you guys have no idea. But the good thing about it is that these techniques and this knowledge can be used not only for self-defense, but used the exact same way even in, in Brazilian cardio capoeira hodas. Uh, and you won't even harm anyone unless you want to. <laughs> the great majority of the time, you don't want to. It's not going to not gonna devolve into an actual fight or a sparring match. And, but uh, the, the application of this knowledge will greatly enhance your skills, your your appreciation of, and your enjoyment of the African art of Kipura. All right, so keep that in your head. Please subscribe to my uh, YouTube. Share this with your friends. Uh, like the video, and leave uh, your comments at the end of this video. Go go visit my website and everything else because all that information is linked in the description of this video. Okay. Follow me on Facebook, follow me on Twitter, follow me on Snapchat, follow all my social media. All those links are in the description of this video. Alright? Alright now. Take care of yourself. Asante sana. Amani. Ashe.